In this session, we're going to look at how to generalize all the different classifiers that we talked about thus far into the case of multi-class classification. All the examples that we looked at until now had two classes, buy, don't buy, light beer, regular beer, online, offline. So the question is, can we actually expand or generalize these classifiers to work in cases where we have more than two classes? Now, obviously, the two class case is the most popular. And the reason is that usually we have some kind of a decision, a go, no go, do something or don't do anything, give a loan or don't. But in some cases, although again, less popular, we will have applications where we do care about classifying into more than two categories. Let's look at an example of textbook adoption from the point of view of a publisher. So the JBH Publishing Company specializes in university textbooks for business schools. That's a very lucrative market. One of its current best-selling books is a computer tools book that's aimed at large introductory computer courses. Although this book has gained a fairly large share of the lucrative computer tools market, JBH would like to know why some universities have never adopted it, and others who adopted it have since switched to a competing book. The data set that's associated with this example includes information about different universities, with the outcome variable being whether the university adopted the book, whether they adopted and dropped it, or whether they never adopted it at all. So we have three types of universities. And for each one of these universities, we have different variables, such as the size of the university or the program, etc. So the first question is, what is the objective here? Is the publisher trying to explain or are they trying to predict? Are they trying to profile? How are these different universities different from each other in terms of their input variables? Or are they trying to classify a new university to decide whether to approach it or not? So that's a good question and I'm sure that you can come up with a business application that is explanatory and with a different business application that is classification. Before we move into more than two groups, we have to notice that now it's going to matter whether the categorical variable y is nominal or ordinal. Nominal means that each class is simply different from another class, such as color. Ordinal means that there is some ordering between the classes small, medium, and large, etc. When we only have two classes, there really is no distinction between nominal and ordinal. And all the methods that we've seen thus far, and all the methods that we've seen thus far, therefore don't distinguish between these cases. But in truth, all the cases that we looked at until now, we're looking at a nominal case of a binary output. So again, in the two class case, it doesn't matter. But now, we're going to try and move from two to more classes, and we'll notice that the classifiers that we looked at, naive bays and k-nearest neighbors and trees and logistic regression, easily generalize to nominal classes, meaning different classes, but not so easily or not at all to ordinal groups. Of the classifiers that we looked at, the only one that does generalize to ordinal groups in a natural way is logistic regression, but it is somewhat complicated. This part is available in the textbook and we won't talk about it in this video. One approach, if you have more than two classes, is just use some kind of a divide and conquer approach. So the idea is if you have multiple classes, just bunch them into two meta classes and then use the techniques that we talked about earlier on and then start breaking down each meta class, breaking it down into two classes and again, going back and using the methods that we talked about. Now, the problem with doing this is that you're going to have to do quite a few analyses. For example, if the classes are ordinal, then if you have G classes, you're going to have to do G minus one possible partitions into meta classes. For nominal, it's even worse. You're going to end up with G times G minus one over two possible partitions. So although this is possible, this is not really the best solution. Now let's see how our different methods really easily generalize to multiple nominal classes. Remember k-nearest neighbors, where the idea is in order to predict a new record, we measure how far that record is from other records in the training data, 
and then allow those records to vote in terms of their y variable. When we have more than two classes, everything is going to be the same because we're still measuring distance in terms of the x's. The only difference is when we get to the step where the neighbors have to vote, we're going to have to define what is the definition of a majority. A cutoff of 50% is not really going to make sense anymore. So is a majority the class that has the highest frequency? Or do we require a certain frequency? So this is how we generalize k-nearest neighbors. And you can see this pictorially on the chart here. Of course, we just have three colors to denote three classes. And if you have a new point anywhere, you choose its neighbors and let them vote. When we use k-nearest neighbor, our output will look something like this. And you see that the left side looks very similar to what we had before. We have the choice of k based on the training and on the validation, so that's not new. What's different is when you look at the confusion matrices, there'll be three by three matrices instead of two by two. In this example, remember that we had three classes, the universities that never adopted the book, the universities that no longer use the book, and the universities that still use that textbook. And of course, these confusion matrices that are three by three are going to be the case with other classifiers as well. How about naive Bayes? Well, in naive Bayes, again, we're measuring similarity in terms of the x's, and then we're looking at the y's. So when you run naive Bayes, the only difference is going to be that if you want to think about it in pivot table words, you're going to have a pivot table that has three columns for the y, if we have y with three classes. Running our example, you can see here that we simply add another set of columns for the third category. But otherwise, everything looks the same. How about classification trees? Same story. The last step of voting is simply going to be defined by a different definition of voting. But otherwise, everything is the same. The terminal nodes can, of course, obtain one of three labels in this case. Logistic regression is the only method from all these methods that we talked about that extends both to ordinal and nominal groups. These are two different ways of using logistic regression. And in fact, you're going to have to specify ahead of time what type of categories you have, because the model for ordinal classes is different from the model from nominal classes. Some software will implement logistic regression for multiple classes, and some software will not. Excel Minor, unfortunately, does not implement logistic regression for more than two classes. And again, the textbook includes more details on how this model is built. Lastly, let's just mention that misclassification costs, which are really important to include in our algorithms if they exist, are going to be much more complicated in the case of more than two classes. We're going to have to complete a three by three matrix of misclassification costs. And although the diagonal is usually going to be very easy, we have many more off-diagonal elements here that are much harder to elicit from the domain expert. So that is one cost that you'll have to take in mind if you're going to move to more than two classes. Think carefully whether you really need the three classes, whether the action that's going to happen as a result of this business analytics project has three possible outcomes. Or maybe you're not going to do anything if you get a never and a no more, but you will do something with the universities that are still using your book. Maybe you're going to approach everyone else except those who are still with your book. Or maybe you're going to approach the ones who are still using your book, but no one else. And in that case, you might want to condense these three categories back into two. So to summarize, all the classifiers that we've seen thus far as well as others that are listed in the textbook, can easily extend to more than two nominal classes, meaning classes that are just different from each other. Logistic regression does have extensions for nominal and ordinal cl classes, but that is more complicated, and not every software will support that. Lastly, misclassification costs are more complicated and sometimes impossible to elicit or define. And therefore, think carefully whether you really need more than two categories.